just drag what I run. Okay. I brought the budget. <coughs> budget for finance charges of late fees? Well, it never happens anymore, but for a while. It was. Okay. And okay. it's not much. No, it's 50 yeah. bucks, but still. And I, <laughs> it used to happen occasionally. Occasionally. Now Jan just argues with her really good guy. <laughs> she does. She won't pay him. <clears throat> she does do a good job. I think it'd be a good idea. Yeah. I know. It's coming. Mm -hmm. You 
play with the seat. Yeah, there you go. I'll bring you a form. How about that? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You guys all remember John and I from last time. Yes, yeah. sir. So, um, <clears throat> really quick, the first page is pretty much the uh, same thing that we presented uh, last time. And then the second page, um, let me uh, refresh some memories here a little bit. Uh, the commission asked us to do some specific things, asked us to publicize a little bit better, continue to get the information about the golf course out in the public, uh, find out some other information. I think uh, Shane was asking specifically about not going some things about how, how golf courses are run and so on. So I did a little bit of research with some uh, other communities in uh, funding and how they work together with, uh, with the golf course to take care of the budget and things like that. So that's what I've done. And then <clears throat> also a question was brought up in regards to uh, what about green fees and what about uh, those kinds of things. So what I've tried to do in the, in the second page is, is help out a little bit more with some of those questions and some of those things that you guys have asked, asked us to do. And then, uh, so I don't know if I, I need to read this, but maybe just to sum up a, a couple of things. Show, show us where the changes are. All right, well, pretty much the second page. So I've, I've asked uh, everywhere from uh, Hutchinson, Cary Park Golf Course, to rural areas like Goodland, Kansas, and uh, some, some other golf courses that are not necessarily comparable in size to Stafford, but to those things. And then, as you can see there, it says most municipal golf courses generate approximately 70% of the operating budget for green fees, rental, and income. The rest of the budget, the rest of the money comes from either the city or the county, the municipality, whoever, whoever takes care of that course or whoever uh, helps supplement that course. And so then, based upon that, uh, we came up with uh, some, with three options. Maybe you guys have, have thought about this and maybe even have some, uh, another option that we can entertain, but this is what we can. It, to, to run the, the golf course as it is right now, to run the, run the course correctly, and efficiently, and that means to take care of upkeep, maintenance, uh, improvements, things like that. We, we felt that it would take uh, around $80,000 a year. Now, the, the golf course has been operating with less than $60,000 a year the last few years, and has since fallen in, fallen behind in terms of maintenance, uh, some upkeep, some improvements to the course, general things that are that are catching up with us uh, tremendously, such as uh, aeration, um, equipment repair, equipment and replacement, replacement uh, chemicals, um, you name it. Not to mention the clubhouse and facilities. So. We, we, then we, we said this to and this will help Shane out. I, I don't know if this, is, this doesn't happen at any other golf course, but really, if in option one, if the commission chooses, the county can take over the entire course. And then property owners could play for free. Simply by showing an ID out there, they, they would pay for free. Right, that, that really would, I think, would answer your question that you brought up the last time since their taxes fund the course. Um, so that's what that's a, that's an option. The uh, second option is really from the from the first page, what we discussed the last time, which what we had asked for. And that would help uh, the club do that. In, in turn it would be then a lot like other municipal municipally run courses where uh, operating budget would be taken care of green fees and other incomes and then the, the balance would be through that meal. 
And then number three, it, and this is uh, this is really where uh, I think I'll allude to a little bit later. But number three really says that that uh, we're getting to the point to the, uh, the force where we'll have to make some some decisions. Our membership right now is at uh, maybe eight or nine members less than last year, but we hope to uh, bring those bring some, some membership up. We, we've tried the discounted fees and so on, and, and we're still working on that. Uh, if, if we can't then, if we don't uh, see any other funds coming in, then, then, we, then we're going to have to make some uh, decisions on where the club is going next year and where the course is going next year. Um, and, and so that's where, where we're at. Um, so, We'd really like to present to you guys and ask you to either go with it, option one or two, and, and with that. I, and I, and I think that the, in the past couple weeks, even right, we found out an anything. I've been in contact, thanks to you, Clayton, about uh, the county website and Patricia. Mm -hmm. and we've been in touch with emails and playing phone tag back and forth about updating the website and doing that. I, I think that just has shown also how much a viable asset that uh, golf course is good account. In fact, she even told me that I'm getting a lot of hits on the, on, on the golf course site. So um, we're going to be uh, updating that a little bit and continue to work with uh, the, the communities. We have support from all three rec commissions as far as the youth programs. Are concerned, and uh, so I think we can. I think we're to the point now where we're really ready to move on and, and get some kind of answer from you guys, so that we can make some decisions. I don't know, if, yeah, if you have any questions about that second page, especially, or maybe if uh, your memories are starting to say, "Oh yeah, I'm really about that," because you guys have a lot of things going through your head. Right? So John and I are here just to help you out. What, what's your present total membership? Forty nine. What's that? Last what's year that we had fifty six. What's that cost now for a membership? Well, it depends. If you're a brand new member, never been a member before, it's three hundred fifty dollars. Uh, that takes care of uh, it's essentially half a membership because we received a grant from one of our members to pay for the other. Okay. For any new member. For any uh, member who wasn't last year, let me take it, took a year off of here, but the members before were giving them a $100 discount. Okay. So, to answer your question a little bit more, it's $550 for the membership. It's a $50 entry fee to that initial fee. And then it's whatever for uh, cards. That's where that, that pretty much comes from. And then also the Taxes are included. Did that answer? That yeah. Answer? yeah. We have raised the dues. Well, we've, a well, years ago. What we've gone to is in. Uh, That's a diminishing return kind of a deal. What we've, what we've gone to is, is more of a, a single membership to a family membership. To because before, probably when we were out there, um, it was just one fee. And then we went into uh, we graduated one simply because we felt that that might be a better attraction for the single members rather than paying half and pay for the same thing as a spare family. Yeah. Well, what are the shares of stock that we used to pay? In, uh, <laughs> That's the I know, but are there actually shares of stock? Well, uh, the way it was explained to me, yes, it doesn't mean a lot. Because, but you have to remember too. You have to remember too. See, it's not necessarily a, a profitable organization. Assume that when it becomes a million-dollar golf course, 
I mean, the bridge the would be worse than that. <laughs> well, Kurt was hoping they'd been two for one or four for one. Yeah. yeah. We'll split that. So zero. We'll split, we'll split that zero dollars. <laughs> I think they was mainly an administrative fee. How long ago do you have records of membership? Forever. Oh, there. I just probably have records of that out there. We never leave off course over. Or whenever you started working there. Yeah, we, we would probably go back and even see uh, wow. how much you still owe. Nothing. <laughs> 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 yeah. I was ahead of Because I was playing about two or three times a year. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, that's. So, I, I, we know that you guys are in the budget process now. Is that right? Mm -hmm. um, so, that's the reason we can't give an answer right now. Whether you know a quarter of a mil or, or the other option, because we don't know. We'll have to wait until all the budgets are in and then we see where we're at. Can you guys think of another option? Somewhere in between, half a mil. Why not? I mean, well, that's what I'm saying. Are you, are you guys open to some other options that might that might help, that might be beneficial for the county? Because really, that's why we're that's that's what we're we're here for. Is there some other, or is there some other information that you guys need from us that would help? I think really the the key to the success of the golf course is youth program. If we get youth, get youth programs started and get kids involved, uh, you know, we've seen this in the past where, uh, I forget who it was, used to sponsor a junior golf and they did the hamburger fry and all that, and that over a couple of times, huh? Yeah, it netted some parents joining because the kids enjoyed it and it was a safe environment. And well, we've already we've already dis we've already uh, discussed that with Stafford Brett uh, Jan. We're going to run a week long uh, session out there already this summer. But and we really would like to go to the uh, a youth day a week once mm -hmm. a week during youth day. But <clears throat> the problem with that is uh, making sure that we get buy in for supervision. And and for that it has to be then. Uh, put this the right way, so I'll just say it as honestly as I can. We want something in return. Mm -hmm. If it's not helping us out, if we're having a youth day for everybody in the county, essentially, to play, and we're not getting anything back, mm -hmm. then the club would say, well, it's not helping us out mm -hmm. at all. We're just running the babysitting service. Exactly. I mean, yeah, and put it mildly, you know, Swimming pools sometimes become that, but swimming pools are funded. Right. See, so that's that's the difference. Can you exist until we get through to the budget? Uh, oh yeah, we're, we're going to exist because of our membership. Now we're going to exist until August. Okay. And with our uh, with our admin members, we're going to get. We're you know we're going to. We've, we've spoken to some specific people that want to, to uh, join. We feel like we're going to be open this year. Now, what if a well goes down? What if we have a, 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 a something happen with electricity? You know, something like you can't, there's a lot of unforeseen uh, situations that we can't take care of. But that's pretty much what everybody has. But we feel we feel uh, secure enough to make it through this golf season. Like I said the first time, I think it's still a valuable asset to the county. I've ran it by a few community people that their first reaction is what I thought it would be. We don't need to spend any more money. But then after they thought about it, they said, oh, yeah, we need it. That would be, uh, we wouldn't be upset with that. Well, if we go through our budget process and we come 
we figure out that we can only fund you like a tenth of a million. How much is that? Well, it's a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah, Okay. Well, John said he would be asking for a quarter. I mean, you're asking for a quarter. Well, I mean, that's what because <laughs> DG said the same thing. No, DG lied. <laughs> um, honestly, I'm happy with anything. Okay. I mean, a anything at all. Um, the, uh, the only thing is that we were saying is we would really like to do some things that we haven't had the opportunity in the last two or four years. Whether it's the equipment, whether it's aeration, whether it's uh, uh, some of the more fertilizer and weed control that we have been skipping on our training. Oh, we can't do it both spring and fall, we can only do it spring. And it's it'll eventually it catches up to the course. So that I I yeah, believe would it be with worth anything. Would it be worthwhile to run an ad in the Stafford and St. John paper just saying that, hey, we're short of funds and any donations would be appreciated or at risk of maybe losing our I, county I, golf course? I think that would be something that if we don't get anything from the commission, then that's something. You wouldn't want to do that first. I no, because then it almost forebodes We can call our new membership. They're not sure the course is going to be there. They're going to pony up 500 bucks to so that, get no refunds. Really drastic measures we take later. I might make people understand better getting tax money there too. And at the same time, they're getting hit with all that every every day in the newspaper, anyway, whether it's the school system or whether it's uh, that's true. Whether, whether it's the fair, you know. 4-H, uh, the STARS program, you know. You know. When, when's the budget process? When might we expect some kind of... Um, all the budgets are supposed to be in to the commissioners by June 19th. And then we'll, they'll go through them and then we'll get them to the auditors. And then they'll bring a draft back. They'll look it over. Cut. I'm assuming cut. <laughs> you know, make adjustments as they as they see fit. You know, and then uh, August 25th is the deadline. So that will be done. Totally done. So I would be happy to sit in on that committee with you guys and help you make some of those cuts. Anyway. So, <laughs> so that we would have uh, some funds available. Election is in. <laughs> <laughs> I just said I would have to help you with that committee. I didn't say it. Oh, right. I've offered the same thing to the school board. They didn't fall for it either. <laughs> um, I would like to know about the school board. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I would like to invite you guys out to the course, though, sometime. Um, Clayton said he would be happy to pay the bill, and the sure. sheriff would be <laughs> happy to provide the, uh, give me a ride through the cheap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Only be looking for my golf ball. <laughs> Is there anything else I can help you guys with? And John and I would be happy to help you out with any other questions you guys might have. Do you guys have a contact information if we need to get a hold of you for questions? Sure, you can call me. Or, okay. John, my number is 5456 Thank you. 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 Thank you.
walls. That's not the way fight was. You can say a solo bridge. If you get out and look on the side of them, there's rebar hanging down. <laughs> Uh, we're, we're probably going to go in there and cut that rebar off and maybe treat that with some epoxy or something. Spray it down. That's the right process. But man, I have to move these cracks. <laughs> What's that? Closed gate, bridge, and pasture. That's the one he's working on. I got that information. It's pretty good. Closed. That would be a most efficient bridge anyway. What about that one that we looked at south of Stafford and east of the Stafford Road? It was a plank. And we looked at it last year. Is that the one where the school bus driver was complaining about? Or? Oh, that was, well, we wouldn't reject that. Uh, that was uh, just south of the middle of the road. It would be, yeah. be, be, be three east of Stafford Road, so it would be on 100 and 122,000. That would be at southeast time. We actually went in there and pulled the deck off that. Oh, that's we don't know who owns a bridge. <laughs> that's that one right there with Mile West of Stafford, just right off of the it's on the stage right away. Uh, and for I I don't know how it ever happened, they got in our stuff and that's a, this is in this this is quite a few years, one year. So so one time they were sorry, trying I yeah. Seen, uh, yeah. It's like it's brand new. Yeah. Uh, it's not like it's brand new. No. <laughs> You're right. It's not like it's brand new. <laughs> <laughs> what roads are on? Which one's that one? Right by the cemetery in Stafford off to the Yeah, it's like it's a five, five barrel, five barrel bridge. Oh, yeah. It's that one. It's yeah. on the stage right Yeah. It runs, I think it's Dooleyville Creek is what mm -hmm. runs through it. All right. Yeah, why? Because when. Because it, it kept, it's been in our bridge files and it's not been in our bridge files. I thought, and he brought it back last time and I said, this isn't our structure. This is our state right away. Yeah, don't look close to them. That's what they said. <laughs> <laughs> the whole Clayton's district. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Which one was full of cash? Oh, that was probably down north of, without, that north of my place. <laughs> <laughs> is it a BB? Yeah, I think it is. CC. CC? Yeah, that's in my, that's north of Clark's feed lot. Down there. Part of the time when it's wet, you can't get down there. You could fall under the water. Well, in the back, in, okay, in the back, there, there is a map. Okay. If, if you might want to have it for it. Okay. But you, it is, well, you can see here, it was listed across when they say that up, up, up to the thousand years ago. When I, did you help them? No, I did not help them. Okay. But, I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, it makes sense after you see it. Time to get into double letters. Yeah. It's going to be a long signature. Okay. All right. 
and then that's he just did what Adam did. He, the state holds ten percent of your purchase, so you have ten points. Oh, because I guess he goes through there and comes out and basically he checks what the inspectors are checking to make sure that they're doing their job, and this was his report back to us, and we will begin a scour evaluation of it from the company side. From the, the state actually hired him. This was part of our federal agency. Right. All this was done. Yeah. But we've got a little scour problem maybe in the southeast corner or, or some of the grounds a little different. But for, the bay, for most of our work, yeah. bridges we want to So we'll see. We do have a couple cement structures. Well, one we'll right down there off Dillon Road, a dirt road back to Grunner. Why they ever did it, I don't know, but back on the abutments, they drove full piling, or cement, mm -hmm. and a cement abutment, and a, and a cement pier out of the middle. But it's a wood, wood piling underneath it. So we've got, we've got to try to get something back up there and get them, them covered up so they're not exposed to the tunnels and stuff. I so said, why? And I asked the engineers, I said, why would anybody do it? I can tell you, money, I guess. <laughs> but I mean, that's a common problem with those type of structures, too. It's that they run on the roads and then the piles are exposed. And usually there's a lot more depth since the next two. Southeast part of Kansas, and their, their road bridge, their bridge report is about this early. Day. Okay, no. they said they had but some of those rivers down, down there. there. They've got lots of bridges. Lots of bridges between rivers. Uh, some, some, of some, of some of them will go. Some of them will go. We'll end up going to two mile grids. That's quite a report. For <laughs> yeah, I pointed that out. He pointed that out to his, uh, his uh, young uh, engineering training. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure they printed a new cover page. <laughs> For every mistake we find in here, it's a thousand dollars. I did get him the GPS board of the survey. He's proceeding on the high risk rural roads side stuff. So they're getting that from the other from the states. Hopefully, soon we get up in the back to get out and sit up the gates for the sign. And I'll talk to the sheriff. I was under the impression on the 911 signs that we couldn't do any. We 
can do new construction, but we can't do maintenance. Uh, with, with it if it's not fixed. So maybe if a lot more lines, we can do a quarter of the county or something. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll try to work something out of the top of the chat and see. Because I'd, I'd like to try to figure something out. Well, it, yeah. you're right. it needs to be done. Yeah. When, when, when everybody else around us yeah. has done it, they, it's kind of confusing when you get over here and look yeah. at it. Yeah. You know, and then, or you got a back track. Yeah. Yeah, if you've got a GPS yeah. unit, right. it takes yeah. time, but it, right. not everybody, you know, it's yeah. not like they're, you know, everybody has one. Yeah. That's kind of the GPS coordinates in Stafford County are not right, though. If you type in my address, and you're going to end up about eight miles more. Yeah, mine's not right either. Eight miles more? Yes. Really? Really. I tell everybody that's trying to come to my house, do not use your GPS. What do you mean by that? I mean, if you type your, your, your physical address in, it won't work. So yours should be... So you're 911 at 10th Avenue. Yeah, but it ought to be 4 something. 459 there. Well, it's 10th Avenue. And it, 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 every one of them will end up north of the Golden Bell Field. Mine end up north of my house, too. When they use their GPS. Who, who we, is that your department or the sheriff's? sheriff's that we, need, we need to discuss that. That's, I just have to, you know, people don't ask where you're at. I'm assuming they're, they're going to try to use the GPS, and I've driven all over the county trying to find those people that are trying to find my house. They say, well, your house isn't where it's supposed to be. <laughs> well, yeah, but I don't know that that would be a problem on this end or problem on somebody else's end is, you know, like the Carmen people or the new whoever's has that. I know, like at my office, uh, 20th Street and 20th Avenue intersect there, and I've got my mailbox on the avenue and it's supposed to be on the street, so that's why people are coming out. I mean, yeah. you find my place, but that would be a quarter of a mile off, too. Well, yeah. It almost seemed like if you Google it too, it didn't take you to the right spot. Like Google was wrong. Google Maps. Mm. Well, I'll do all my life to do my research on that because it's grabbing my nuts too. Well, no. Because nobody asks where you live anymore because it just, you know, that's why. Yeah. Yeah. The 911 signs would be nice because that way they can actually look when they're out there lost. Where are you at? 459 Northwest. Is that that way they can physically look at it and say, oh, okay, I am here. How do I get to your house? There you go. Yeah, I would say they made a statement on that. I'm pretty sure Google Maps is wrong too. Does Carl have those coordinates for all the property owners? No. Is it start? It's downstairs. GIS. It's all in the sheriff's office. GIS. Where'd you take it? The addresses are not in the, on the real estate. Where's the gold bill? That's what they say. It takes you a mile, a mile and a half, the intersection of <clears throat> a mile and a half, or two miles north is where it takes you. Mm -hmm. what, are you huh. what are you using there? Google Earth. Google. Wow. Northwest 10th Avenue, St. John, Kansas. We're probably just mapped or Right there, so yeah, I can't be the only one that is. The pins north of the feedlot. There's the feedlot. <laughs> <laughs> and it takes you. 
I know I might as well head north and I'm trying to look for my house because they'll be sending me around. That's right. Two miles north of Golden Bell's might be a place to be in some mm -hmm. cars. <laughs> no, 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 no. Steve, you any problems with the GPS on her? On, on EMS runs and stuff? Like giving you the correct location? We don't really you know. do too much. You know, the sheriff said that your ambulances aren't even equipped with GPS? We, we have, uh, <laughs> we ended up getting another one um, just because we had uh, some folks get lost in Wichita. So we have two of the three that have it now. But a, but a Garmin, I mean just a Garmin that we sit on the dash. I'm surprised the new ambulance didn't come with well, it. Well, yeah, that's, I mean, when Jeff told me that, I was, I fell over. Are you kidding me? I mean, and, and really, on, like on the ambulances, I mean, they, they ought to, they ought to put a, a backup camera on the things, too, because, I mean, that's a, that's a feature that's on many cars, and it would be, well, put it'd be on. plenty helpful. Well, I'm sure they put it on. Yeah, they put it on. <laughs> it's not going to come standing. It's a good thing but, off yeah. <laughs> but they'll put it on. Nothing's supposed to be standing. I'm just curious. I'm going to check mine out. Well, if you've had as many people come to your place as we've had in the last year after the tornado and nobody can find it, it really torques them out. Well, no, we'll be here too. And, and people today cannot use physical landmarks. No, you're right. They're not. <laughs> I can tell whether they're smart or dumb before they ever get to my house. Because you know. <laughs> when they ignore any help with physical landmarks, I tell them don't type it in the GPS, you're not going to make it to my place. Oh yeah, I will. Okay. Well, when they're half an hour late, they call me and say, hey, I'm lost. <laughs> I almost feel like just leaving them out there, you know. Huh. <laughs> we, we incorporated like a, a zone, zone every mile is, is, is a zone number. And the reason I did that is because I had so much radio traffic that everybody wanted to know, wanted to have directions from from where they're coming from. That's four sets of instructions. Yeah. <laughs> it, just, it just garbles up so much radio time that it just becomes uh, it just becomes problematic and so I don't know how much they're embracing it, but the dispatchers give out a zone number two and, and that is the mile section right there. Right there. Yeah. They tell you how to get there. But we have maps for them for that. Mm -hmm. yeah, most of your people know where they're going. Though. That's yeah, true. Coming from out of town. Yeah. It needs to be more slow. Yeah. 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 Because all these points of interest on the Wetlands and Wildlife Byway are all GPS coordinated. <laughs> you know, if you're at. Uh, you might be at Stafford Lake. Overlook, yeah. Are you putting in GPS coordinates or are you putting in address? They're putting in GPS coordinates. Yeah, see, so wow. the GPS, I don't think they can really yeah. mess up. <laughs> I would think it would be real hard to. If, if so, there's lots of things that are in control. But it's the address that's wrong and is, is not corresponding with it. Right. Yeah, I do know that the other guy that did the QC and QA on this on the bridge stuff, he said one of them, they had the coordinate wrong because it took him miles from where the structure was at. So they had something wrong in there and I, I never sit down and try to figure out the, the GPS coordinates and see, you know. <laughs> I never been that interested. <laughs> well that's all I have for this morning. Okay. Thank you. No, thank you. We finally finished the yeah, snow recovery. The one thing that we, we discovered on that is that uh, the FEMA folks have a little spiel that they had to put on that, that's real annoying. <laughs> because it goes on and on and on. It's about 40 minutes, and that really annoys folks when they're coming in from the field and yeah. they got to sit there and let them die out. 
the, the problem though is that I'm sure them people are mandated to do just that. So at the end of the process yesterday, I, I visited with them and I said, I'm sure that you guys have to do what you have to do. I said, but can't we come up with a, a reasonable thing for both of us? I said, how about if you sent me the forms ahead of time and I get with everybody, you know, in a couple of weeks before you show up and we have all the, all the information filled out and then uh, they'll come to your meeting and they'll sign in and they'll sign their, they'll sign their, their dollar sheets and then I'll leave. <laughs> and you can keep talking, but, but they're going to go back and work. And he said, uh, he said it probably worked. They, they just need to attend the meeting. They need to have a sign-in sheet that shows that they were there. And, and so that's what we're going to try to do in future ones. Uh, and I'm going to try to uh, keep that township list up because some of it was outdated uh, for contacts. And even if, if we can put out some information when we have one of these events, real quick, to tell people, um, keep track of your information in, th in this proper manner. Uh, because we, we collected, I think, uh, I didn't see the total tally, but it looked like it was going to be, for our county, around the $30,000 range for a total for all the townships in the county and everybody. And the other part of that is, um, the gentleman yesterday told me that uh, for, for this whole group, which was several counties, two, three, four, I don't know how many, but uh, they only met the threshold about $2,400. So if one $2,500 claim would have failed to have been issued, the whole lot would have been lost. lost. That FEMA guy saw me afterwards, and he told me that he knew one of our township board members really well for meeting him in the past, and that he would come out here and visit with him individually later on if he would want to be paid. So, I mean, they'd be willing to get along with you if you yeah, try uh, even. I mean, if it don't work out that day, to come in there. It sounded like he was glad to come back out. Yeah. So he told me. He said, "You tell him I'll talk to him, and it won't take very long." <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's that deal there. But um, thirty thousand dollars, thirty thousand um, dollars. The tires we we had uh, we had no bids on the tires. The one thing uh, we had a gentleman. That asked about him. Nick was telling me that he had, he had actually offered a couple hundred bucks on the tire. I don't know if he just didn't see this uh, then. Um, but what I was going to ask you guys is, is if I can find somebody to give us a, a hundred or more dollars, can, can I just uh, can I just sell them to them? And, can we get a bid? So I don't know what else to do with it. Yeah, those takeoffs or something. They're, they're good tires, but I guess they just don't fit a lot of vehicles. What size are they? I think it was like a, I don't know. Mm -hmm. The PR 22.5, I guess. This is Yokohama, I don't know that. <laughs> but they got, got that tread on them, and I didn't, but I guess they just, they're it not. makes sense to me that it's not like a tire size. What is it? 225. Yes, the, the yeah, that's that's kind of like a car tire. They're big truck tires. Yeah, they're big truck tires. I saw them sitting out there, but I couldn't. I don't think I could make them fit on any much. But I'll check. And see. So, but if uh, if we can find somebody, we'll yeah. we'll we'll just we'll sell them because we have no bid. Well, we satisfy the requirement. Yeah. Then, um, we, uh, on the building out there at the EMS office, we, we've, uh, we started replacing the windows. Um, and and our, our plan was to, to replace three this year and then three next year. So um, I'd, I'd like to just continue on with Frack Blast. They're the ones that put the others in. Their bid is, is reasonably close to what it, what it was before. I think it's a little bit higher. But, uh, they're eight hundred and thirty-five dollars and fifty cents per window, which that pretty high, but it's a commercial window, and, and they take it out too. And it's, that's not a small process in that detail. So um, that uh, for three would be uh, two thousand five hundred six dollars and fifty cents. So I'd like to ask permission to, uh, to go ahead and uh, authorize that. We have that in the budget. Uh, 
They sent the form two days before, I mean, the application form there to a roll to go two days before we used to be there. And anyhow, he says, well, and, and the, <clears throat> the uh, meeting was about uh, post closure, book closure costs, how they come up with those numbers and uh, financial assurance, meaning that they're, you know, they're sure that you'll have money to do closure. And he says, well, you need to, if you can attend this meeting, you really need to be there and fix that for you. That had to come out to sign off on our new mm -hmm. The one that cost us all the extra money mm -hmm. on consulting. Mm -hmm. And I thought, come on, man. <laughs> so, why did he think the bid was almost full? Well, apparently, he forgot what he put in the new <laughs> that he come out and looked at. I see. He said, How are you doing? Basically, you, you are all right. I think I'd make it a lot. 
I wanted to say. Okay, either, you know, <laughs> either, well, either your position ain't needed or you're not doing <laughs> <one or the other. laughs> you know? But you don't argue with him, so. But I have the uh, um, form here for you to sign on the uh, cost agreement. Say eighteen hundred dollars. Yes. <clears throat> and they're just basically doing paperwork for you. Second, all in favor say aye. 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 All those same sign. Motion carried. Today's date. Take second. guys about is uh, the recycling program we have. I would like to switch that. For what we do is uh, multi-stream recycling. I would like to go to single stream recycling, which is single stream is uh, all your recycling goes in together. It's mixed. There's no sorting of it. Uh, which knocks out basically all the handling of it, uh, going to get in the trailers, uh, bring them in, have to sort them. Um, like I said, you know, the recycling has, has increased and the amount of time, uh, like per se, when I go to get a trailer, uh, the bins that are on that trailer are designed to slope full of, ideally is to pull it to a beetle or open it up, let it all dump out. Right? No, um, when I dump a trailer, it takes, it's up to about three times the you know, amount of time it takes to empty one because if you open the door, you shut it. You got to sort it. You open the door, you got to shut it. Especially plastics. Because uh, you got your number two uh, plastics. You got your one through sevens, and those have to be sorted. Um, so the single screen recycling, um, you provide containers and it all goes into a paper, plastic, glass. Everything we recycle goes into one container. And uh, Terry and I have been uh, working on this. And what it would be is we pull the trailers. And I've already talked to Protainer, the company we bought them through. If we go a single screen, uh, of course, they would like to sell us uh, some trailers, but uh, they're quite costly. They're, mm -hmm. they're, uh, $10,000 a piece for an 18 cubic foot in dumps. But uh, <clears throat> they said they would be interested in buying these trailers back if we go single screen. And what Terry and I are looking at, um, the cost of curbside recycling that some of the other bigger cities do is uh, a very costly. Uh, just looking at containers going to be the curbside is you go with the poly carts goes out curbside with all your mixed recyclers put together. You're at the $90 uh, of the container of that. Times 1500 of it was a quarter million dollars for a container. What Terry and I are looking at is where our uh, citizens are used to coming to a facility, uh, you know, what we got with trailers. We used to come in there, pulling the trailers out, selling them back to the company, um, <clears throat> going with uh, 
Uh, you can see on the, we kind of got a plan made out here. We'll go with like three dumpsters in Stafford, three in St. John. It's right here on this page. Right here. And Terry would haul the recycles and we talk to Marvin Nisley. He will accept the recycles. Uh, what Terry would do is on his route, where he would take a day to go empty it. He starts with an empty truck, trash truck, backs up the container, takes it up, dumps it. Uh, we just kind of done all the recycles and empty them. He takes them to Nisley and props it off and they process it. And then And when you're when you've got unattended, be it trailers, dumpsters, whatever, you're still going to have you know problems with stuff going. You can't put bags in there. There's also you know, I've got a sheet here that shows you what what to be recycled, what can be recycled. Um, basically, what can be recycled is everything that we're still doing, but it all goes into one container and. What I, I would still have to run my same route that I run checking the, instead of checking the trailers or bringing them in and emptying. What I'll do on a daily basis is go through there and pull out the bags. Uh, that way, when he comes along, there won't be any of the loads to be contaminated with bags. Uh, uh, we're still going to have the same uh, stuff thrown in there like coffee pots, skillets, bits, spark you know, it's got to come out. You know, uh, it's like yeah. yesterday, I dumped Stafford's, or uh, I dumped the yard trailers in for yard bins. There was barbed wire in the cans, uh, there was some cleaner discs. Uh, you know, I mean, that stuff's still got to come out. You know. But, you know, I can go in and, and on a daily basis and clean them out even quicker than, you know, that takes to dump the trailer. I've talked to a few people that's coming in and out of the recycle building, and uh, the cannabis is talking about I mean, people are already mixing it again, I and mean, then they wouldn't be doing it at all. And, and I've got a cost analysis here of, of a breakdown uh, of what, in 2012, uh, expenses, I've got right here, I don't, I, I mean, yeah, you guys have copied it, okay. Um, expense total of recycling last year, it's been, you know, that's not covered. In, uh, repairs and service on pickups and the trailer or whatever. So it's $5,190 expense. Uh, revenue we brought in last year uh, was $7,069. Selling of the recyclers. And uh, you're looking at a difference to the positive side of $1,800. Um, the cost to single stream recycle, to change the single stream, uh, Running with the dumpster and stuff, you're looking about five to six that it's going to be about the same, pretty close to the same amount to recycle single screen. Uh, right here on this page, Terry has got, you know, a uh, $50 per month for painted green dumpsters. What we're going to do is take the dumpster, paint green, put recycle symbols, and uh, instructions for people to hope to follow, no bags, and stuff. And Darren's got In a single stream, your recyclables aren't near as much as because it has to be sorted yet. And so, and, uh, right now, as near as I can tell, the delivery price to somebody is about six, six, hundred, six or seven dollars. The, the, the one advantage it might be, and I didn't write this in there, but uh, if, this, if, this stuff, if this stuff goes to a separate place, it will save on the tipping fees that the county pays. Less do you think the single stream would be worth? Like you got seven thousand dollars, you. Well, we're, we're, I'm probably I'm thinking actually if, if, if we make it easy, we'll we put that stuff in there. Uh, we'll probably do more. Get more people. I mean, I've had a lot of feedback from people saying, you know, I'm not going to recycle because I got to have a container in my house for plastic for number two plastic. I got to have a container for number one plastic. I got to have a container for uh, number two colored plastic. Uh, then you got your newspaper, and, you know. 
a lot of people say that's the reason they don't recycle. And uh, you know, I mean, my wife and I do it as much. You know, you've got all the containers sitting here. You know, and, uh, but you'll have to do more volume to get the same amount of money, right? Yeah. How much, I mean, is it worth 30% or do you have an idea? Actually, I've been looking at that stuff. And, uh, and part of the deal we're doing, we retain the funds from selling that stuff. That kind of help you free food and stuff like that. I don't really, you know, on the curbside stuff, I don't really think there will be enough time in this county to you know, think problem. about that. And this is the simplest and least expensive way I can think of to do it. And uh, you, you, we can always have some dumpsters or take them away and use whatever we need. Just don't need. We're kind of, we're kind of in the air here. Really exactly know. Well. So rather than <clears throat> separating the cans and the bottles and the newspapers and the cardboard, it just it all goes into one container. Mm -hmm. He starts in the empty truck, and all of it's back in that truck, and he takes it to the supplies and comes back out. Ten, ten dumpsters, unless they're extremely full, it's good. This is going to make a real damn truck, so it would collect up in the truck before it comes off. You can't, you can't go, you can't go there. You know, I tell them. Yeah. And then these containers would be larger than what we have now. If you can combine, say, one trailer, they'd be equivalent to one container, or would it be a larger container? No, you'd have to have in. Stafford, St. John, uh, you have to have at least three. See, our trailers now are, are uh, 22 yard trailers. But when you go to Stafford, Forsyth, or, or Maxville, uh, pretty much the exact same bins are always full. You don't do it plastic pot, cardboard, mm -hmm. and uh, maybe one of the newspapers. Uh, you're looking about probably eight to 10 cubic yards. Every time you go get it, and that would also alleviate the problem of you know. I mean, there are times I get calls from citizens, you know, two days after I had them, they're calling to to this boat. Bin is full, and a lot of that's cardboard. You know, it's my really close box, and then it's wedged in there sideways, and the next guy comes along, puts it right on top, and you get a that's going to be a half a bin set. I don't know Paul's grocery. If they bail, I don't know if they bail or not. To, you know, when, you know, when you get a day of the week, when they decide to get it's in the middle of a restaurant, you know, you get two guns in the middle. And so, produce boxes. You know, going single stream, it just takes so much of the handling of it out of it. Um, and if we went single stream, um, we got that building sitting there. You know, I mean, there, the, the building would not be used for recycling anymore. And that's why I express the definite interest in improving that building. That was political. You're going to have to make sure you're not violating that grant. By as far as transferring, selling, or. several loads over to them uh, at no cost to the county. And when their grant expired, well, we still could have taken e-waste over to them, but then we had to pay them, which the, the charge by the town, which ended up being almost $200 a ton to recycle e-waste versus, which what I do now is I just smash it, put it in my trailer, take a touch, $27 a ton to landfill versus almost $200 a ton to recycle. Yes, they're all the same. We see them on the street. 
to make it disappear. So where would these containers be at then, like the three and set or the three and same time? Well, what I would what I would do is initially start out when you start out uh, put them right where the trailers were. People are used to coming to that location. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, but then you know, I mean, you could where he backs up to him when the truck picks him up. Um, uh, you, well, we have three of them in Stafford. If it would be more convenient for people, I mean, to not you can scatter them out. They don't all have to be in one mm -hmm. location. You can see how it all goes in. It's all mixed. You know, they wouldn't have to go here to recycle this for that. You know, um, what are we gaining or losing financially by? Doing from what we're doing to where you want to go. Well, I guess I'm not, I'm not clear on that. What we're, what, I mean, what? See, last year I, I wanted to hire an employee to to help with the recycling, right. and uh, or basically to do the recycling. You got one person doing that. Um, it's it, what it's doing is, is gradually it's getting it's getting more and more, and and it's it's getting tough to keep up with. But what do we financially? What do we? What, what do we gain by doing recycling? Is it a, just a service to the taxpayers, or is it, is, you know, are we financially compensated uh, by what the tonnage of the waste that we sell? There's I, I, there's I no gain that. in recycling. Period. Okay. okay. Well, of course, I mean right here on paper we've got an eighteen hundred dollar gain. Well, I know, but that's just but, uh, yeah, but. Uh, uh, Financially, there's not going to be a gain or a loss. I mean, are, are we financially compensated for the time or what what you're doing now, opposed to what you're wanting to, to get to do? You, you see what I'm saying? He sells the, the sort of recyclables now. more than, than, than we will on same street. Yeah, right. Yeah. But you'll sell them on, on the single street. Yeah, we will. Right. Right. Well, listen, you know, I mean, we can set a point where if it's higher than that, you can't even get the rest of the money. I'm just trying to... Well, yeah, I, did, I don't know. I mean, I'm trying to learn this, as, as you guys well, are talking about. We are... And we, I, can't put, I can't sit here yeah, and, I and put it together because I don't know. Right. I mean, well, I, and, I, I and I'm know. still working about yeah. it. Yeah. So, you know. And I just wondered if it's something we ought to take some time and really... I'd study a little bit. Study yeah. this but and I'm get this figured well, out before I mean, we make a rational decision. I mean, that, sure, let's do this. this last four years. Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, but uh, uh, there is one advantage of people to the county if people will go ahead and use it. And I think if we make it easier for them, they likely will. Uh, as I say, you're going to you're going to not pay a ticket fee on whatever, whatever goes in the recycle truck. Right. But I'd like to see that all that. Yeah. Well, from basically the service. You know, well, it, yeah, but I mean, it. Yeah, I, I can tell you, like, and I would probably dedicate my small truck to this. Uh, and you figure that stuff about 800, 800 pounds a year. It depends on how it is, you know. Six to 800. And, uh, uh, so, what, 20 yards is. It's about eight tons. Okay. Well, then you've got to. So that's uh, two hundred and sixteen dollars, and the county wouldn't have to pay for two hundred feet. Now that's that's a guess. Maybe even broad guess, but that would be one advantage. I mean, recycling is a service that a lot of people use in the county. Uh, some weeks I'll go grab that. Stuff. Stafford trailer, bring it in, dump it, and uh, getting it dumped ain't the problem, but by the time you get back, you may not have time to, because once you filled six or eight boxes in that building, um, there's been times I've just left the trailer there and take it back the next morning, and uh, man, that trailer's gone. People are calling me. Yeah, yeah. 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 How long have we been recycling? Um, since 1996. You know, and the a dumpster down at ground level or a different container would be more user friendly for people. I have driven by in the winter. I go by and after the snow, and I take a broom and go and clean the try to beat the ice off the running boards and the snow off the lids. Of the, they're not very user friendly for 
I'd say 80 percent of the majority of the people that recycle are up there. I've driven by, I'm surprised we've never had a problem with some of my stuff from falling off one of them. But I've driven by and there's a, uh, you know, no way lady or mm-hmm. gentleman standing there. One that's standing on an ice platform with a lid resting <laughs> on her head. <laughs> <laughs> stuff being, you know. It's, the, the dumpster would be about, then we would be about three and a half feet. Which is, you know, quite a bit easier to put stuff in those bins. After you deliver that, they actually sort that stuff in? The, the, way, the, way, the way it's going to go is that we'll take it over nicely. He doesn't sort it there. He'll put it in the truck and take it on the bridge top where they've got a big facility to sort it. And all those now can make a big facility to it. A machine? What? Or a person? A machine? Well, part of, <coughs> part of it's done by machine, but initially when it comes out, it, 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 it's, and now it's packed. Big plane. Yeah. And, and when, it, when it comes out, it's just a big old. Looks like a big loaf of bread, yeah. and uh, they, they, it, it goes on a conveyor, and it starts spreading out on that conveyor. And there are people out there who physically take out contamination, and then it, 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 it does go through some machines. I mean, it you know, goes through magnets, yeah, uh, magnets, metal machines, and all that. And then, and they got a single line of people standing there. The biggest issue with with, with the, that's the biggest issue with haul and mix stuff is is the the value of your load goes down real quick if you've got a broken glass in there. There are municipalities who do this, and uh, and they ban broken glass in there. Okay, now, in our case, what would we put it? Yeah. You know? Uh, it, and glass doesn't pack. In recycling, in the market, glass is not very bad. Beer bottles are working on this stuff for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway uh, uh, I mean, in this, you, there's a whole list of stuff that can be recycled. I think people aren't doing that. Yeah. But uh, if, you, if, if the public would cooperate, understand the rules, and we make it easier for them, it might, it might take off. Or not. <laughs> I just, you know, yeah, still that's a best blue sky, you know. You still have to do some sort of people throwing barbed wire in there. So. Well, yeah. yeah, I mean, Darren is going to be pretty much in control of this. They can't, they can't put plastic trash bags in these stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah and uh, when I go to a container and first, then look, I mean, e- even my bins are that way. Uh, people will open the lid, they'll throw the bag in all its call. You know, it's going to have three or four different kinds of recycling and they throw the bag in all so. You know, I know that's one thing we can do. So we can go up once a big old bag falls out and close it. You've got to go over, tear it open, and go through it. If, if you don't, if you went ahead and just, you know, were lazy about it and just let it go, then you end up with a problem in mm-hmm. uh, Pratt County. Because well, yeah. they have, I mean, yeah. this was years ago uh, when we first started, uh, they were sending boxes back. I mean, you take a trailer load up there and you got a box full of it's mixed up. They'll put it back on the trailer and just send it back. You know, you get your feet in the purpose, you're either landfill on it or you're going through it. In, in, in this case, there wouldn't be any of that. If it's in a bag, it just goes in a trash truck. There's not enough there to go under mm-hmm. uh, I'm sure people would, citizens would love if it's curbside. But, you know, like Terry said, you know, that's hard on city streets. Um, yeah, the other thing about that, our, our trucks are heavy in, in the summertime. Especially staff doesn't really like us on their streets. I think it would be well received if they could come to an area, you know, location they're used to coming to, open the thing up, throw everything in. You know. And you know, it's just going to take some time to uh, get people to. The biggest problem is going to be just plastic bags. You know, the biggest problem is going to get, and I think it's getting, it's going to be getting uh, folks used to make sure understanding. Yeah, so I tell you, you know, if there's a dumpster setting somewhere, yeah. somebody's going to put something in you know, it. That one out there by, by the diesel pumps at the shortstop, there are people, I don't know where they come from, you know, Stafford County tags are way out there, and they put tears in the bags in there. It's just an ongoing deal. 
I mean, if there's nothing you can do about it. If we go with this, uh, if we use dumpsters, which is going to be a lot more conducive to even if the easy with this truck back by up, picking up, but we have to get a paint and mark through because uh, dumpsters are not related to trash. Yeah. If they're using right. recycle bins like they are now for trash, you know, traditional recycle colors will you know, and that, 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 that discriminates from everything else already. You know, they, they've still got to have, I mean, it's not a big thing to make it, but, uh, when, you know, like I said, when you're, when you're dealing with the public and, and your stuff is unattended, I mean, ideally it would be the way Pratt does it. They've got three employees. Uh, every vehicle that comes in there to recycle goes in one in the building now. And when the vehicle pulls in there, there's at least one person there helping them recycle and make sure that it gets to the right mm -hmm. spot. You know, the only way to really solve the uh, problem with public is to you know, you have to be there all the time. Otherwise, you go on a You have a lot of signs up down there now, like no, no plastic bags or anything like that. I have, uh, I have even taken a magic, magic marker and, and wrote on each and every bin on the trailer, no plastic. I mean, unless you want some things that off the rail. You would think people that recycle would be better than that. I mean, um, it be your... I even wrote on the staff of bins one time, I am not your babysitter. <laughs> yes, do it right or don't do it at all. I, well, I have. I mean, you get, uh, it's very disgusting to open a, a bin and somebody has, I don't think intentionally, but they'll take spoiled milk, throw the thing in the, or it looks like they dump it all over in the contents. Uh, you open one, there's two or three skillets with grease in there next to the bin. You're tired of washing the skillets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, I found everything in things from you know, to plug the Well, but we have had success in recycling. Yeah. I mean, it's still, I mean, <clears throat> I think the people are being more aware of it. And you know, we've gone from <clears throat> 70, 60 tons, 70 tons, 80 tons, now we're 100 tons in a year. And, uh, but, you know, like I said earlier, uh, last year, you know, I was thinking, hire somebody uh, the the more usage it gets that's great because you, you know you're getting that's less going to the landfill but the more people use it the bigger it makes you know, it just kind of comes. Appreciate the this should be more user friendly if they if you can educate them to the fact that what goes in and what doesn't and that they can all go together it should be more user friendly it, 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 you know, it takes a little bit. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, even at your home, you've got... But obviously, if someone's in one container, and then you get to the dump site, you dump it. You're done, you're gone. Uh, obviously, though, some of them are taking advantage of the containers you already have. You know, and I've got, on each trailer, I have the... I've uh, been in this game long enough, I know what you live in. It gets mixed. Loon can still can be good mixed. Um, because, you know, people are probably doing it at home. they got one stack of food or two. Uh, uh, but I have them trailers sitting, or those bins on the trailer sitting side to side to make it more convenient. Uh, plastic pop, you know, uh, jug, they get it. So we're going to sit side to side on the trailer. You do everything you can to try to help it along with it. Are those, uh, are those uh, <laughs> chemical jugs you get down there, are those recycled? Some of them are. You know, and another thing is, is uh, about being able to mix it. Uh, when I come in from the landfill at meeting, it's, you got to go in and turn the place up when you come in. I mean, you got to go through each and every box because I mean, people have come in. And it's pretty busy throughout there all day long. People coming and going. And sometimes when I get, get in, I can't even get in a building because there are two people sitting. Well, I mean, it's just fine. But uh, you got people, I mean, you got small containers, uh, aspirin models, and stuff like that. Uh, to get, you know, each one, each recycle container has a recycle symbol on And I have that number and everything on a sign right above each box in the building. But it is, you know, I'm 44 years old, and I see pretty good, but I have a tough time. You know, I have to hold it up and look at Just try, the symbol is so little on there. You know, I can see people, you know, saying, hey, you know, just dump it here, you know, because uh, it's tough to read. You get some, a lot of them labels are so little. You know, it's got the recycle symbol with the number of plastic that it is. 
and it can be kind of confusing. Uh, you got, you know, when you have a number two, a milk jug is a number two. It is a number two with its own. It's a cloudy type plastic. Then you got number two color, Clorox bottles, all of that. Uh, then you got number one, number one clear, which is your hot bottles, uh, plastic water bottles. And you got your number one keys. <coughs> I told my wife she's way too picky when she goes, yeah, right now she won't have a piece of paper. <laughs> Yeah. So anyway, this, the, the idea is just to, is to, I guess, get rid of it easier and better, more than yeah. something else. You know. uh, and, I, and I truly do not know, you know, what kind of price we get. I, mean, mm -hmm. I, I checked a couple places and mixed loads of other glass and this. You know, so well, well, making handling easier for for us and. and uh, I think it'd be making handling easier for us makes it harder for them. So we're going to you know, so they're going to have more work on their end. So I mean, that's where you're going to spend your time. Yeah, I guess that's But actually, I mean, like, you know, this is speculation about me. I'm not sure about anything. I've got a pretty good idea. Good idea. I know Medicine Lodge has went from pin recycling to single stream. Uh, a lot of uh, two other cameras I know that went two singles. Could, could you ask them, Darren, what, how much like their cost they get paid for? for mm -hmm. That'd be good information to have, I think. Kind of get more number of yeah. figures. Yeah, actually, I'd like to have a good idea of what you're going to pay for. It's mm -hmm. yeah. just my change. Well, then it wasn't at Kinsley or, or Larnan that did away with the curbside. Remember, Four or five years ago, they had all those poly cards for sale. Or mm -hmm. and they were selling them cheap. Mm -hmm. Now, were they going to single stream, or were they just? Well, see, they were already. They were all poly cards. They were already single stream. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <coughs> but all that was going to a landfill, wasn't it? I think it was. Yeah, that, that was their uh, regular service. And I remember one county—they were going to change something. I think they replaced all those containers and decided everything was in the street. The EPA is, uh, they're, I'll tell you what, they're, they're getting a little hard to figure out. San Francisco, this was, EPA was pushing, they divert 80% of the trash for recycling. It's coming up when the EPA is going to say that it's not going to go on, that all food waste gets, gets mulched. Okay, now I don't want to be around that area. <laughs> and there's a lot of cities out in California where, and all over the West Coast, actually, where, where they're hauling off this food waste and, and, and put it out there to age or whatever, dry out. And, uh, and the people that live down the middle that are really not happy. The rats are happy. Uh, another thing I need to table with you guys, um, about 10 days ago, um, I developed a leak pulled it on my pickup to a week, it's the one time to do it. Uh, I used to call it pulling the trailer wheel. Um, I had Bill look at it and he thought it was, uh, you know, a little cooler line. So I took it down to Lawrence Monday morning and he got on the lift and called me about half hour later. I wanted to look at it and he showed me the turbo. He's making his oil seal, a new turbo. And uh, that oil seal is out. What it's doing is running down your big air tube, which is the front of the pickup. Um, it only leaks after I've shut it off. Of course, it's got to run down the tube. Uh, every morning I've got a puddle about that big. It, uh, the turbo is not out. It runs and has plenty of power, runs fine. Um, the turbo is functioning, but it's, it's leaking more. And uh, Lawrence said the uh, turbo for that vehicle, just the cost of the part is $1,800 per turbo. And uh, he said you're looking at $450, $500, somewhere there for the way to repair it. Approximately $2,500 to repair it. I just took that off. Um, 
Yeah, Two years ago, I had an ejector problem with that vehicle, and I called the last one. At that time, it had uh -huh. 47,000 miles on it. And of course, it's the same one. Asked him, you know, what can we do in the morning on this vehicle? And he said, yeah. And I took it up to our uh, last one, and uh, I took it up to them. They fixed it with two injectors and things that they was on. And a week later, I ended up with it for $800. And I argued with it, and they said, well, I said, I said uh, your service manager has told me that he had to go on. And of course, he said, well, you, you, said, you know, you got a mileage warranty versus time warranty, and time is up. So they turned, you know, so I didn't even go back to them. Uh, mm -hmm. And I went on the way. They wouldn't honor that uh, warranty. Uh, the vehicle only has 54,000 miles on um, If we if we, I mean, if we go single stream, I wouldn't need the vehicle. Um, but uh, if we stay, you know, going this way, we're gonna have to see about it. I mean, it runs fine and everything, but you know, pulls just about, down pulls about four. Down. Yeah. <laughs> it's dropping probably a pint here and there. Mm -hmm. You know, about pine out. It's making a mess. <clears throat> Way to fix this. If the turbo is still working, there's no way to fix this. That's what I asked Lawrence. I said, Well, can't we uh, take the turbo apart the yeah. ceiling? He said, No, they don't do that. Said, there's such tight tolerances on turbo. And he says, And when you have a turbo problem, he said, If you go in and put a seal in, uh, he said, uh, if, if there is any damage, <coughs> you the propeller in there, that thing comes apart, and you just walk in there. Anytime you're dealing with a turbo, he said, They've got to change the turbo. Yeah, I tried several years ago, I tried to rebuild a turbo on a trash truck. And it lasted about two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, on the pickup, do you want to hold off for now and see? I mean, if um, you know, I don't need a one-ton dually if I'm not pulling trailers. Uh, I don't. It's a flatbed. Uh, you could either trade that vehicle in or use it as a trade-in vehicle, like we say the road and ready to that with a trailer I had one time, <coughs> and let the dealership advise it, take care of the turbo problem, or you just want to wait on it. How many miles does it have on it? 54,000. You're not going to be able to sell it without getting fixed, mm -hmm. is my opinion. But, I mean, if, um, if we put $2,500 in a 94 Duramax diesel, Still worth <coughs> 94 during max diesel. Is. Yeah. I mean, that reset up pretty good. Right there. If you didn't need it, it would sell it. I think you might as well fix it myself. Yeah, I think that makes sense. You want me to get some another bid? I have to look at it. Yeah, it would be on the same side. Sure. And uh, on this single stream recycling, uh, you want me to get some more figures of what it's going to bring, yeah. uh, dollar wise. And, uh, we talked to those guys. Well, I'll down. get hold of Nisley, and he's the one that's going to be yeah. accepting this stuff and find out where he goes with it. And I'll get yeah. he, he, said he, he said he would give him one price. Whatever loads going to be. Talking bottles, pickled jars, yeah, yeah. window panes. Uh, yeah. There are ways to do it which are quite expensive. And uh, <coughs> well, as I, I mean, say, the stuff does pack. You know, I mean, it, uh, a whole, you know, a couple of pickle jars take up a pretty good bit of space. Mm -hmm. Since they don't have a truck, they take up that much space. And that's it. It's just like it's broken glass. It doesn't pack. It, Take, uh, what I don't understand is when you're sorting it in the, in the, the end process, when you can pack it, uh, you know, 1,500 pounds of glass, mm -hmm. and you embed it in cardboard. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Well, I mean, uh, to 
sort glass, then you've got another, I mean, you'd have to have another container at each site to sort glass. Um, then you've got to have a uh, way of loading it, storing it. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, get rid of it any problem, I mean, it can go crap. Yeah. Then you've got to have a facility to store it. Anyway, glass is a problem. I, you know, I haven't thought of any kind of solution. that load to recycle those and put the last load in. I think the trailer is going to be part of that ground here. I know. It used to be here or several years ago in Wichita. They had containers for brown glass, green glass, mm -hmm. and clear glass. Yeah. And those signs still have those trailers still have the sign up in front. So it's going to be a hard side. Yeah, uh, you know, know, I didn't take the, I'm sure I'm having a little bit of a chance on the university. I think maybe all I got was there are some cities out there that have where we purchased three bins for what we were helping. There's some cities out there with the grant agreement. He had three in the application. One was for his trash. Do you recall, was that full one was for recyclables? I don't know. Yeah, it, was, it was a ton. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oddball shot. Yeah. 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 But it should all be downstairs. There were three different trucks that came by every day. The one on the route. Well, in your research, Darren, I think it sounds to me like that a single stream is going to take less yeah. man hours. And less, less man hours, less, less handling, less headache, and less mileage. It's more convenient. So if we just give more us convenient a, for everybody yeah. around here. So they just give us a picture of what. You know, of course, I realize that the single stream right now is, you know, pretty much guesswork. But. No, I mean you can you can you can take a lesson from uh, poison. I mean they're they're doing that, yeah. and they're uh, over and they have contract with waste management. Actually. Uh, Guys out here should have bought it, so we can get the name of them. Excuse me. And, and, and it, it's all same industry. And they put out uh, one sixty-five gallon tanker right there and pick it up, and they pick it up on a bi weekly basis. An extra container. The, the initial container is free. And then the extra one costs you. And they're and they couldn't give me anything. Well, even uh, sorting and marking, the, the mark fluctuates almost on a daily basis. The intention was to haul it to Sunflower, some part of the first fire, so they could sort it. But up there, it almost, we used, it almost we used takes to go there. a supervisor for one person to sort that stuff out. Just, when we used to go up there, yes, but just what it is. you go over there so in the building, the and they would have, you know, a helper with the person in there, they sit there every night, they'd be carrying one of the page for a time. <laughs> you know, which, that's great that, the, you know, that most of their staff is, is uh, handicapped, and that's great that they got stuff for them to do, you know. Uh, but to, when you take a semi-trailer load, uh, Recycles it early. They don't even have a dock that you can back it to. You have to put out the deck and bring them out one at a time so they can them up and forth. Uh, it's an all day process just to get rid of the load. They're so backed up and behind. Uh, last time I was up there, I was only up seeing about, about a month ago. Yeah, it was just a plastic bag. And that place you couldn't already get through the garage. It's just so full of boxes that they're behind while I'm sitting outside. Uh, whether it's getting the boxes and they're breaking apart or they're spilling out on the ground. Well, just so you know, just it's been a couple months ago, just just the heck of because you know, every once in a while uh, we had a truck up in Great Bend to get worked on. And usually when we take them up there, we're full of trash. And I've dumped up there at, uh, at the at the Barton County Home for a couple of times. 
it was 36 bucks a ton. And uh, so I got kind of checking up landfills charge. You know, kind of was still the lowest around by a bunch. Stafford Hill? Hmm? Stafford Hill? There's three old candidates. Oh, yeah. I think Pratt's the hottest. Yeah, I don't remember what it was. It was yeah. For a tipping thing? Yeah. And we've had to stay a dollar a ton that we take in. But, uh, and probably, as far as I know, we are the cheapest. When we charge by the load, we don't have scales. Um, you know, I'm constantly, when I have a, somebody comes in that I do not recognize, I have to. During a storm or even storm season, um, I have to check every spent comes in because I have caught them in years past. And the majority of them work for A and R out of prep, but uh, they'll come. I mean, if they can't provide me a work order as to where they're working, I won't, will not let them go. Um, I've caught them coming over from prep. What we charge I, on shingles, I charge them a dollar square. But if you got thirty square on a truck, you cost you thirty bucks. Uh, in Pratt, they're looking like 240. This is a big difference. <laughs> you know, and I've called them coming over here. I'm probably, I'm say that. I'm probably charged by the cubic, the cubic yard. That's the way, uh, that's the way most of those people do. You know, uh, haul away the junk, you know, the junk people that haul away stuff from homes. That's how they charge them. Okay, well, if you get that, then we can. Okay. I hope that makes sense. But, you know, it, it may be that it may be that those recyclables are worth a lot more than I think they're going to be exposed. Yeah, I don't uh, I, I really don't know. I would think those counties that have done it for a while it could give you an average anyway. Maybe. But I'll, but it, I'll change the revenue. Yeah, uh, waste management. Takes all the funds from up there. Always, and they've got their own sorting facility in the past. So they, I, I think they would do pretty well. But I mean, if, if, if we stay recycling like we are, um, you know, if you end up, um, when you can't keep up and you got to hire somebody, then that just takes away I mean, any, any bit of money that you may make and increase the cost of that. But, uh, uh, it, I mean, it's, you know, recycling is not mandatory, not yet anything. Um, there are some states and cities that it is mandatory. But uh, it's something that's not going to go away. I know that. I mean, if you take away, you're, you're liable to have a uh, uh, rally out here. Well, <laughs> you know, I, I, and I'm thinking in not too many years, you could be able to make it mandatory. Just so. Somebody up there got something. Or should be. No, but if the main goal of recycling is financially, it's no, it's just not there. No. You know, but if we can still do it and do it in a lot easier fashion, still get rid of it. I think the more stuff we can keep out of the landfill, the better off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and the landfill wants it that way too, actually. Yeah. Well, you take a hundred. You know, we recycle up up to or up to about a hundred ton a year. And, uh, you know, you take $27 a ton of that. I mean, if you're not putting in the landfill, you know. But yeah, when you come out over once a month with 10 tons, you know, that's, uh, you know, that's, you know, the max field through it? I cringe every time I pull up to it. I know it's in there. It's in there. But I can't, I can't, I just can't understand why, I, I just don't think that, there's enough tonnage out here in Stafford County for recycle, you know, to really do it as a, as a good and done. I mean, <coughs> if you just look at the number of tons of trash we take over there, I mean, it ain't that much. All right. All right, thank you. Thanks, guys. Okay, I'll get back with you some more information. I'll get a little bit on the pickup. I'm sad or confused myself. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see you taking notes. What? I didn't see you taking notes.
Uh, no, I, was, I, was, I was too confused. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Please. Well, they say you what are all the tables out here in the hallway with the computers on? Next door. What'd you say? I said you've been very patient. Well, that's all right. How are you guys today? Good. Yeah. Okay. How are you today? I'm fine. Good. Um, I wanted to bring, um, to come to you guys today to talk to you about my salary, my, count, my county salary. Um, do you guys have a copy of the schedule, the salary schedule? I'll this with me. So if we can just go to the last page. That's where the elected salaries are and some of the non-elected. The column, the furthest right column is what I'd like to draw your attention to. Um, my, for several years, I have felt that um, my county salary has kind of been out of structure with the other elected officials and non-elected officials. So I just wanted to visit with you guys about it and see if we could talk about it and do something about it. Um, I, I would request, I would like to see my county salary raised to $47,367. That's $47,367. dollars you say? $367. Currently, my county salary, well, it's listed there. $38,867.63? Yes. And then forty seven three sixty seven. Yes. Um, comparisons I've done in, in years past, um, my salary is comparable, but other salaries with our county are more over the top compared to other. So I feel this would put my salary more in line with everybody else's. Um, I've done com comparison studies of your I mean, interested in them, I can give them to you. I, all I did was went on the KAC website. The surveys are there. You can go look at them. And, you know, you can do your research. And um, is what I did. I compared other counties that are approximately the same population as our counties. And, and then something else you got to keep in mind. Um, we are one of the top ten oil and gas counties. So, to me, I think it would be fair to compare appraisal or valuations because that is a lot more work if you have a lot of oil and gas. So, um, like one of the counties I was compared to, I know Barber County, they would have a, a lot of oil and gas like we do. But in this comparison that I did, that was about the only other county that had oh, yes. a, a tall oil and gas or a big oil and gas valuation comparable to Stafford County. Oil and gas is a lot of work. Um, you got to, you know, send out delinquent notices. You got to do the warrants. You got to garnish the oil runs to collect the warrants, um, and then you. It's like accounts receivables. You gotta stay on top of it. You gotta revisit it every few months. Okay, who has it paid? We gotta call the purchaser. Well, you know, can you tell me why we're not being paid on this? You, you know, follow up is very key to getting getting things collected. So besides the fact of comparing population wise, I think you need to keep in mind that we are one of the top ten oil and gas counties. 
in, in the state of Kansas. And that does require a lot more work also. So what, do you, what are your thoughts? I'd like to answer any questions that you guys have. The 38,000 doesn't include the, how do you get back from licenses? No, this is my county salary. I'm compensated for the motor vehicle work I do from the state because those that is money that the legislature does and that is motor vehicles money. It's not county. It's not for duties that I do for the county. Do you, do you know what that total would be last year from the state? It, it was about 9500 I think. That so that's that eighty-five, sixty. You said yeah, that's, that's what it was. Right? That money comes from mm -hmm. the state. Last year it was eighty-five, sixty. No, last year it was a little over nine thousand. Yeah, I think I said nine hundred. And it can fluctuate. It's based on how many transactions. Trend, yeah, there's a statute. Yeah. yeah, but that I'm compensated for the motor vehicle work I do. I'm, I'm talking about my county salary for the county work that I do. But that compensation, so, is that county money or is that state money? It's, it's it not done for motor vehicle. Which is our county money. No, it's I, not I am money. in control right, okay. of that money. It's like okay. a, a portion of each transaction comes out of that and it goes in there. Okay. Right. Okay. And that's like the $33,000 that I turned over to the county money, you guys. Yeah, you know, what money I do not use out of that is turned over to County General for you guys to use then as you wish. And, you know, this last year I transferred 33000 that was left over out of that. But I, I can use it as I need to for motor vehicle expenses. So, but the, where I want to stay targeted is on my county compensation. Nothing to do with my motor vehicle compensation. Um, we, we've done Austin Peters, or is that what it's called? Yeah. Austin. Yeah. Uh -huh. Austin. Salary surveys. Uh -huh. We have done salary surveys, and it was recommended in there that I, I get a salary increase. Do you think? Uh, now, is my salary comparable to other counties? Yes. But. Yeah, I got one. You know, that was just the point. I think um, to e even the structure. So I would like to just ask for um, an adjustment in my county wages. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And Clayton remembers. I have asked mm -hmm. for a raise before. It, it's it's been a. Um, it's something I've thought about for a long time, and, and everybody's known about it, the previous commission, too. So. But in this book, they take in comp they already take in your motor vehicle compensation into your salary. I, I in, this, in this book, they did, because they had your salary listed yeah, at Yeah, they really shouldn't figure my motor, because I'm compensated for my motor vehicle, my state duties from, this, from the motor vehicle. Because here, they're, I mean, in this book, they're saying that you should be raised, compensated $2,518.14. But they included my motor vehicles. And that would yeah. put you roughly right at 50000 See, I would contend I don't think they should add that motor vehicle in there. Because it has nothing to do with like, county obligations. But there's no other departments that are compensated like that. Well, um, it depends how all counties set it up. Now, the the clerk used to get an election stipend, and so all counties do it different. Right. Some yeah. counties, um, the Register of Deeds clerk and the treasurer all get whatever the treasurer gets. They give the Register of Deeds and the clerk that uh -huh. amount too for the and then they set their county salary. So it, it's just however you want to do it. Well, I mean, here in the past year, I mean, to my knowledge, it, it's been, it hasn't been that way. No, it has in the past. I don't know when you quit getting your election salary. I never have gotten just an election salary. Dorothy, Dorothy, there used to be an election budget 
separate from the clerk's budget. And I think that's when part of that salary would come out of there. But it's just all one budget now. Because I know the court that used to get two checks. I don't know election. I don't know when she changed it. But I do have some comparison reports if you're interested or, you know, you can go do your own research too. And that would really probably be, be fairest. But I mean, you can look at my reports and double check them to what's on KAC website. If, you, if you'd like to have them, I'd be more than happy to give them to you. And the latest that's out there on KAC website is 2009. So I did a comparison in 2006 and 2009. And so. Not very <laughs> But yeah, I just think it's time. This, this went on for quite a while and, you know, I just, I would just ask that. What do you see? What do you see your the, the motor vehicle compensation? Do you see that continually increasing? Depends how many transactions we do. Right. Yeah. But I mean, because I mean, I, mean I, I've looked back after we talked last week from 2006, and that number is it hasn't multiplied, but it's it's grown greatly. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the thing that I'm hung up with, and I've talk to you about this is that number growing and, and some of the other department, none of the other department heads here getting other compensation for the work they do for a salary increase, total take home increase. You know, that, that's that's where I'm hung up with. Is this $38,000 number fair? Probably not. But on the flip side of that, if you continue to do more transactions and, and that number grows to $12,000, I mean, your, your take home is going to be pushing $60,000. And I don't know if that's fair when we haven't adjusted or for uh, the other department heads responsibilities, I guess. If, if that makes sense. I mean, that's the rationale that I'm using in looking at the numbers that I have looked at. And I don't think we should even use the motor vehicle but to, to talk about, I'm just talking about my county duties, you know, for the tax roll, the banking. I know what your county duties statutory. are motor vehicle transactions too. To the state. Right. Well, yeah. Yes. Yeah, to the state. <laughs> yeah. But it's not, it's not my duties to, to the county um, for you guys to figure my county salary. Well, this take home pay. I mean, it, I think we, we have we have to look at total salary, whether the state pays it or we pay it. I know it's not coming out of our budget, but I, to be fair, which seems to be the thing in the courthouse is to be fair, I think we have to look at total salary. Yeah, the way I look at it, if I'm not doing motor vehicle in my office, and it, it will come to that point, motor vehicle, I mean, I will have to sign a contract with the state of Kansas, and if I don't perform right, they can take motor vehicle away from me. Who would they give it to? Them? Somebody, some other surrounding county or something, somebody that would be willing to do it right. I mean, I'm held accountable. I'm getting compensated for my motor vehicle work. But that is a pretty good French benefit. It's, the, the motor, the motor vehicle. It was set up by the Kansas legislature. Right. Yeah, yeah. so <laughs> I have nothing to... Is any of that good to your employees? No. It, it goes to the church. But, but I think on the flip side of that, I mean, if, if let, I, let me back up. Um, my motor vehicle supervisor, I do pay a stipend out of that. Yeah, I thought, I yeah. thought so. So, so my motor works. vehicle supervisor does get okay. it's $150 a month. Yeah. And that comes out of that same fund? And that comes yeah. out of that motor vehicle operating fund. Mm -hmm. I 
I noticed there's a limitation of 15,000. Yeah, only 15, so you much. can only go up to 15, they're capped out. So, is, does, I mean, does your motor vehicle, is, that, is there a cap to that or not? 15,000. If I would ever meet that many that's transactions, as high as, as, can high as I can okay. get. Yeah. But I, I mean, I'm just talking amongst us. I do feel that if and when we're ever faced with that decision of if we lose our motor vehicles, then you're, you know, in my opinion, at that point, then we should adjust your salary. And with with you not getting that at that point, but I mean, is that is that fair? Or? I I don't. I don't think so, because I have my statutory obligations to the county, just like everybody else. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if, if yeah, if I'm not doing motor vehicle work in my office, what what are you going to pay me? What what is my county salary worth to you? Yeah. Is, is the question I would well, pose. I don't know. That. That's a million dollar question right now. <laughs> and and comparing county salaries, you know, I'm comparable, but other elected officials and non-elected officials in the county are higher than comparable. So I think that's justification to do an adjustment in my county salary to come in line with some of the other people in. I mean, why would we give one elected official or an unelected official, um, uh, you know, 20% more salary compared to other counties? Then, you know, wh why why do we, why would we have a difference? We should be pretty much the, the same. That, that's kind of my argument. I mean, if if this elected official gets 20% more compared to all these other counties, then everybody in our county should get about 20% more too. I mean, and I think that should go for all the elected and unelected officials in the county, not just me. I mean, I think that's fair. I don't disagree with you, but I still think we have to figure the motor vehicle fees in there to make it fair. But I would like, I would agree with you that it would be nice to have kind of everybody in the same percentile or whatever. All right. I mean, according to this report, we're above that. Yeah. Like Most a, of our, a lot of our salaries are above mm -hmm. other counties. Right. And that's that's my argument. My calorie, I want I want my salary raised comparable to the other uh -huh. elected officials and unelected teams. officials. I just want the same percentage. And, and the dilemma is, is on this motor vehicle, because that's that's added compensation, whereas other elected and non-elected, there's no revenue coming in. They're not, they're not generating any. You know, in your position, you get additional monies from the state, and I, I realize that state money versus county money, but I think we have to look at, you know, like Kurt said, we're going to have to look at this, you know, this total compensation, whether it comes from the county or the state. I mean, we could just do away with motor vehicles, yeah, and then we could bring you up, you know, to the 47, 367, and you'd be in line with the registered deeds, and Don't want to get rid of it, do you? No, no. So it's in the in the IRPs. Are they? I, I don't, don't have a choice to get rid of it. I mean, it's just if I do a bad job, okay. and it's why they did that. They changed legislation because there was a county up around <laughs> Topeka <laughs> that did a terrible job, and people went to the state and said, "Can't you do something?" And they could. They had no recourse. So that's why now they're they, coming they and we'll, we will probably have to sign contracts 
and there's going to be accountability now, and it, it's really ruined it for a lot of us treasurers that's done a good job all along. But I can't blame them because the people were not service right. That there was nothing the state could do that had no recourse. So they're trying to fix that situation. In case you get a bad treasurer, they can say, hey, that's it. We, we're, we got customers. We got, I mean, you got to get your tags. You got to get vehicles tagged properly. Otherwise, you got a whole bunch of improper title work going on, and that just opens the door yeah. for Part of the county wasn't in this study. No, they don't participate. Yeah, some counties don't participate. Well, I mean, they did the surrounding counties, but a few others. But here is my 2006 survey. It's all nice and color coded for you. Yeah. I spent a lot of time coloring that. <laughs> and that was from several years ago when I did that. And then here's the 09 survey. This is boring. Yeah, so there's some light reading material. It <laughs> doesn't have color. But, but like these highlighted ones, see I just did all the counties that KAC recorded and I did it by population in the first column. So I took what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight counties there that are highlighted and those are all comparable to Stafford. You know, and as you go on then the population grows. I got them listed by population order on that one. So. So you can look that over. I mean, what are their salaries today? Do you know that? Did you find no. that out? No, it's not on the KAC right. website. But I mean, you don't know these treasurers well enough to call and say, I'm working on my <laughs> salary. Oh. Can you tell me what your, you take what's your, home? What's your take, take home is? It's a lot of work to call and say, well, what does it Well, I mean, there's a heck of a spread there from $25,000 to $40,000, dollars 8, 8, 894 Yeah. And what the color code means, like, like the green represents, that's the high, in that row, the green highlighted one is who is paid the highest between those comparisons. The, does that make sense? Uh -huh. Like for Ch Chautauqua, see, the clerks get paid more. In Smith County, the treasurer gets paid more. Right. So see, there's no, there's no love of, well, this is typically who gets paid more in the county. It, it's your guys' discretion. Right. The commissioners said that. So. So we have an assignment. Yeah. I would like to know how much time you guys would like to give me because to result in, to give me an answer. You mean before budgets or after budgets? Um, I have budget room, so that's that's not an issue for my budget. I have budget room, so. I have enough for that. Yeah, I would like it effective June the first. Is what I'm asking. Uh, we, oh, I don't think so. We have to know. Well, it wouldn't be until next month. So. Yeah. So I mean, you got to, but I, I kind of want to you know when you guys would like to give me an answer so I just not, I just don't want it to drop off. Yeah. A couple of weeks. And if you guys have questions, would you please, you know, just feel free and call me or come by and talk to me. But, you know, yeah. you got to be diplomatic about it, so. I would say two weeks. That'd be fine. Two weeks. Okay. All right.
Now, I would like to call in an executive session for 15 minutes. Non elected personnel. I move to go into executive session for 15 minutes with the county treasurer, county clerk, and commissioners for 15 minutes for non elected personnel. Second. It's been moved and seconded. We're going to executive session for 15 minutes. All in favor say aye. Aye. Let's oppose, same sign. Motion carried. Um, the total amount on the final page is $105,000 of parcels that are eligible for tax sale. $105,960. Mm -hmm. $105,960.07. Hmm. And um, Joe Sheepak has yeah, told me he is sending out letters, and I think he's already sent them because I've gotten a couple phone calls already. <laughs> so how many years do they have to be in arrears? Oh, 2009 year is the eligible year. Okay. Um, there's a couple of the highlighted ones. Um, those were in the tax sale last year. And Stafford City did not forgive special taxes. Oh. So if they don't pay them, boom, they qualify. But Joe was going to look at that and kind of get back to me on that. I thought that was interesting. And then I think um, there might have been an issue of some correcting deeds that needed to be filed yet that weren't. So I think there's some issues. So I this, the list is that long. this list may not be accurate. I mean, well, it seems like most people get their money. Yeah. So, yeah. It's just a game with them. They so I don't them. know um, when it gets to the point to do a tax sale. If you're planning on Joe Sheepack um, to do another tax sale, or that would kind of close off the Yeah. yeah. We'll have to wait. Well, no. We'll not have to wait now. I mean, it's May 20th was the... May 10th was May 10th was the, 10th was the deadline for the second half. second half. So, and it's three years, right? Yes. 2009 year. It has to be three redemption years. Delay point for a homestead. Um, a tax goes to redemption status the next September. So your tax is almost a year old when it goes to redemption status. Then it's got to be three redemption years before it's eligible for tax sale. So you really almost got four, your tax years are almost four years old. Then if you only do a tax sale every couple of years, every three years, you can be in five, six, seven, eight yeah, years delinquent before you get around to getting it done. That's why doing it yearly it, to keep it clean um, is good. And once you get them cleaned up, yeah, I think you could go to like a every other year thing, but sometimes you just got to do it every year just to get it cleaned up. Okay. Um, our delinquent warrants that we do, and I, I want to say we do this on behalf of the sheriff's office. This is not a duty that we have to do in our office. But I want to collect the taxes, so I do it. And Maribel does an outstanding job. Um, I incorporated the system many years ago when Linda was treasurer. I went to a class with uh, Mickey Billinger. Anyway, I, co I carbon copied his system and got it implemented. And so I used to do it. When I took treasure, I handed it off to Lisa Weber, then we handed it off to LaDonna, and now Maribel does it. But um, the first page there is a 2007 year tax. That's our oldest oil tax, personal property we have. It's $13.08. Um, it, that could be turned over to the county attorney to sell. But the county attorney is going to say, really, for $13, you want me to sell this property? So we just keep trying to go after the oil company. A lot of times is why you can't collect it is because it may just be not producing. 
it's not plugged. It's just sitting there. So that kind of thing. Um, the second page is 2008 taxes. If you notice, the first one is just the oil tax. The second one is an intangible. The third one is a personal property. And the third one, fourth one, is a 1620 truck. So all of those are personal property except for the one oil. And personal property is hard to collect too, like trucks, vehicles, trailers. People move out of, out of state or something, and they're hard to get. And, yeah, and that's all those other three are that one person. Do you notice that? Mm -hmm. So I think that's real outstanding. Um, 2009 year taxes, our total amount remaining is $508. And there you see the same names again. 2010 year, our outstanding for oil and personal property is $2,003. And then the 2011 is $2,800. So total is $5,600. And that is outstanding, I want to tell you. My girls do a good job. And like I say, it takes a lot of time to call these purchasers back. Or, no, I sold it. So then we have to go after the person that purchased it from them. Then it's a lot of tag, phone tagging. You call the purchaser, they're not there. They call you back, back and forth. You've got to get copies of new division orders. I mean, it's a lot of work. And again, for being one of the top ten oil and gas counties in the state of Kansas, that's year taxes will be at their third year redemption in September. So we, we kind of figured ahead saying that if these taxes are still delinquent in September, they're eligible. And then that will give Joe a good starting run. Because just in a few months they'll be eligible anyway. I doubt it. They'll be paid. Although we have had some phone calls, so I think, I think some of them will be paid. It's really cheaper for the people to go borrow the money than to pay the interest to the county. It, I mean, interest rates are cheaper at the bank than, for, I mean, I don't know why people, and what, then the what fees. What is our interest rate? I think it's at 7%. Is that the max it could be? It's set every year by PVD uh, when we get notification. So Some years may be more or less, I mean, 2009 year could be 8 percent, really, but it figures it all. But right now, for the 12 years, 7 percent. When I first came to work here, it used to be 18 percent. I remember that. So, finance charge. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Okay. I have, what? I'll wait till next week to mind, but Rebecca Waters, last year we participated in the Relay for Life thing with um, I think it's a group of teachers at Maxville. Mm -hmm. We paid whatever you wanted to pay and every Wednesday you got to wear jeans. We raised like two. We do? I don't care. <laughs> but she's asking again if we want to participate. I. I don't what did they do? What did you last year? Do you remember? 
we, we participated last year. Oh, just wearing jeans? Mm -hmm. oh. We got to where if you gave them, gave whatever you wanted, you could wear jeans on the next day. And we gave that money to them. Um, but what money did you give them? It was a little over $200. Oh, that was not, not everybody participated, but it's, I don't know. It lasts it's for like six or eight weeks, oh, I think. It's not counting. No, 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 no. It's the employees. Oh, employees. If I choose okay. to wear jeans okay. on Wednesday or whatever lost. we decide, there's other things you can do. Do you guys care if we do that? No. I believe it. We'll give you our full support. <laughs> Except, no, I'm not kidding. Wearing you. jeans on Wednesday here. Well, we'll have it on Monday then. I, I don't know. I'll talk with We're you. on video. You have to look presentable. Care. I have nothing to hide. I will talk to the others. And I just wanted to make sure it was okay with you if we helped them out. Sure. It's kind of fun. Yeah. Okay, now, one more thing. Uh, actually, two more. Oh, jeez. Um, now, this is, might be good news. This was a very interesting, I thought. This lady contacted me. She's with... It's called SB Services, and what they do is they go through your telecommunication bills and find errors and make the phone company pay you back, basically. I want you guys to look at this stuff and read it. We don't have to decide today, but I just thought, thought this was very interesting. Well, you guys are always complaining about the phone bill. Don't work. work. Okay. So... so I'm going to call these other counties because she has some reference letters. Um, what does this cost? Well, no, you, no, you pay them a fee to do this for you. Yeah, well, they just get part of the proceeds. Yeah, but, but um, I'll, like I said, I'll oh, call some of the yeah. Yeah. For, the, for a year. Okay. You can't even be out of anything. I don't know. It, it's just kind of interesting. So we'll look that over. We can talk about that next week. Where are they out of? Indiana, I think. That's on that one sheet where they're out of. Well, Some of the bigger counties have used it. Yeah. Um, High school. Seward County, Bourbon, Dickinson. <laughs> That'd be alright. So, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, you might make it more in Indiana. Yeah, but they ask for all these super secret reports from your phone company and go through them and make them pony up with what they say, you know, I don't know. So, but anyway, I've got budgets, but I can do them next week. What's the other thing? Oh, <laughs> um, I should have talked about this when the horse was here. According to federal law, we have to have a an, an area designated as a breastfeeding place. Here in the courthouse? Here in the courthouse. Can't be a bathroom. So I'm just warning you. It has to be a private area for employees and the public. So I'm supposed to make a policy for our employees. Yeah, so that's coming. I'm at the little conference room downstairs. Not private enough. Why? Who says? It's got a door. I'm just saying, I was told it was not private enough by this little girl that came through the building. So, so have to add on to the courthouse, is that what you're telling us? I don't know what they're going to do. in the lactation center? <laughs> <laughs> that's what they look like. Nothing <laughs> says. So, yeah. And that comes from who? Um, federal government has mandated this. And, and there was a gal that actually came around and told you Yes, she was that. from Barton County. She, yeah. So I'm going to get with Doris. And so what's, what's... We have to provide what's, a reasonable break time for nursing mothers, which... So what, what constitutes something that's private? Um, Not that I know. Normally Here again, if yeah. we employed less than 50 employees, we would not have to worry about this. Oh, well, we'd say 15 females? 50 employees. Oh, we don't have to worry. Uh, well, do you count, do you consider elected, elected no. employees? The insurance companies. We're going to get out on that too. Mm -hmm. 
I wouldn't worry about that. Not worry about what about the nerve? I would not July worry about 5th, that. They'll kill a messenger. I say that you're open. And that's a make up from a snow. Day. I agree too. I just was I was told that I asked, told her I would ask. No, it's a make up from a snow day, Okay. <laughs> that's fine. Okay. Alright. Cool. What else? I will be on the agenda at eight thirty next week to get all my stuff done before anybody else gets in. Okay. Is that it? Kurt? Okay. We're adjourned.